for this video is question number one. So I have pasted that into a new document down here so I can write on this. And question number one, we're going to be skipping part B because it has content that we haven't learned at this point yet in the class. But the rest of this question is definitely great practice for learning about long run, short run, aggregate supply, and aggregate demand. So the question says, assume that the economy of Verlandia is in short run equilibrium with a real GDP of 500 million and the full employment level of real GDP of 550. Then you'll notice that we need to graph that. So one of the things that we have to pay close attention to is how they want us to label this. Some of these newer questions have been changing up the labels a little. We're so used to doing uh, YE and PLE that sometimes when they throw out these number one labels, we are thrown off a little. So the short run equilibrium is a real GDP of 500 million and the full employment is 550. So when I look at this, the short run equilibrium is less than what the full employment should be. So that tells me that this economy is in a recessionary gap. And I'm gonna draw Y1 and PL1 here. Then I'm gonna draw the long run aggregate supply to the right of that short run equilibrium. And I'm gonna label it YF as they say. OK, so again, this short run equilibrium point right here is 500, whereas the long run full employment level is right here at 550. So that's why I drew that to the right of the short run. Now it says, assume that policymakers in Verlandia are considering changing the government spending to restore full employment. So that means they want to get the economy back to that intersection in the short run. And the marginal propensity to save is 0.2. So now for part C. So again, this is part A. We're going to label it B. We are skipping and we're going to part C and we're going to do point one or, or, or part one rather. Calculate the minimum change and state the direction of the change. This is kind of a newer wording from the College Board, but I think they're just trying to get kids to focus on decreasing or increasing spending for the direction as opposed to using a negative number or a positive number. They want you to use words instead of symbols. So it says calculate the minimum change and state the direction. Well, if the economy is currently below full employment, then we want to increase spending because we want the GDP to grow. So 1 over 0.2 is going to be the spending multiplier, which is the same as 1 over 2 tenths. We divide by a fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal. 10 over 2 comes out to be 5. The gap between full employment and the current equilibrium is $50 million, and I got that from up here. So the change in GDP equals the change in spending times the spending multiplier. So $50 million equals the change in spending times five. Hopefully you're feeling pretty confident in your ability to divide 50 by five, and we'll see that 10 million is the change in spending, and we wanna indicate the direction, increase in government spending. So again, I'm using that word increase as opposed to just leaving it as a positive number. And then we wanna show that change in GDP on our graph. So my little trick to show, to get this in the right spot, remember they wanted to completely close the output gap. So I always start on the point of intersection and I draw a piece up and a piece down. I'm gonna label this AD2 because I see the new price level is gonna be labeled PL2 and I'm gonna draw some arrows shifting into the right. So that's number one.